With the 15th pick and with the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Dwayne Haskins, Montez Sweat. Welcome all my fellow Redskin brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Redskins fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Redskins Report. So two more signings by the Washington Redskins in free agency. What has been a very, very active free agency period. Not a lot of big names, not a lot of household names, but guys that are going to come in and compete. I've talked about that word compete a lot because that's what you're going to see. We continue to add players at positions that you don't necessarily think, well, do we need another guy there? Like running back, for instance, the Redskins signed running back Peyton Barber, ex-Tampa Bay Buccaneer, to a two-year, $3 million deal. Now, again, there's no guarantees here that he'll make this football team. And frankly, if all the running backs that we think are going to make this football team are healthy, I don't think Peyton Barber makes this football team. He's only guaranteed $600,000. Um, so it's not like he is um, has a contract that makes him untouchable this offseason. If he comes in, competes, and the other guys just beat him out. Or look, if Darius Geis, Adrian Peterson, J.D. McKissick, and um, Bryce Love are all healthy, I, I don't see a way Peyton Barber makes this football team. I'm going to just be very frank and candid with you, okay? But if one of those guys were to go down, and, and we've seen that already with this group, Bryce Love having not played a game in a Redskins uniform, and Darius Geis, for the life of me, can't seem to stay healthy, um, it's not out of the realm of possibility that there's a roster spot and an opening for a guy like Peyton Barber, who is a quality NFL running back. He's not trash. It's not like this is a guy that you're just taking a flyer on. Now, the tight end that we're taking, uh, uh, that we also signed today, that is a guy that um, I'm not, that doesn't move the needle for me at all whatsoever. And, you know, really with the tight end position in general, nothing has moved the needle for me at all. We took a flyer on the X. Uh, Virginia Tech quarterback turned tight end uh, a little bit earlier in the free agency process. Now we're taking a flyer on another tight end that Richard Rodgers is the guy that's been in this league. His claim to fame is the uh, Motor City um, Mary. If you remember that play where he catches the Hail Mary late in the ball game versus the Detroit Lions, gives the Packers a, an improbable win on the road in Detroit. And uh, he'll ever he'll forever go in uh, lore in Packers lore, that is, for the Motor City uh, Mary. But at, at the end of the day, um, outside of that, he hasn't had much production in his career. I actually thought he was going to be a solid uh, pass-catching tight end in Green Bay. And it just, for whatever reason, never really materialized. And he's solid. He's not He's not great. He's not a guy that really moves the needle for me. But again, going to add him to the mix at the tight end position and you're going to allow these guys to compete. I assume they're still going to look to add a young tight end in uh, the draft. And that will bring the total to five guys to compete for probably what is three spots on this football team. Uh, so I, I look at that that group and I say, OK, um, not a lot there. Nothing really gets you excited. I look at the running back group and the additions that they have made. I like J.D. McKissick. I've already told you that. One of my favorite free agent signings to this point. Not really that enthused by Peyton Barber. Again, solid quality NFL running back. Does everything well. Nothing great. Okay. Uh, doesn't have top end speed. Can catch it out of the backfield, but he's not an elite pass catcher. Um, he's quick, but he's not super fast. I mean, th there's there's some good things with Peyton Barber, but again, nothing that's going to knock your socks off. And he doesn't do anything that well to the point where he's going to stand out amongst the backs that he's surrounded by. Uh, so I don't know if there's a way for him to carve out a niche to where he has to be on this roster, maybe outside of playing special teams, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, two more additions to this football team that don't necessarily move the needle for me, but this kind of goes in line with what I've already explained to you that the plan is with Ron Rivera, which is just bring a bunch of guys in, to compete, and I'll, I'll, I'll take that a step further. I'll expound upon what we talked about with Rivera's plan, the video that I did a couple of days ago. I'll expound upon that here quickly, that these moves kind of further home the point that 
a lot of the guys that we have known as Redskins that have been on this roster for two, three years, a lot of these guys aren't going to be on the football team. Like they're not signing a lot of these guys just for show, just to show up and compete and push some of the guys on the roster. They're signing these guys with the intent of them making the football team. So, you know, there's a lot of guys whose roster spots are currently in danger. All right. A Jerron Christian may not make this football team. A Josh Harvey Clemens, probably not going to make this football team. They're not signing all of these linebackers just for their health. All right. Some of these running backs, look, they're not cutting Adrian Peterson. They're not cutting Darius Geis. But I don't know. Bryce Love, I'd like to think that he's secure, but there's no guarantees. I mean, he could easily end up on IR if he if he turns his ankle and, and, and it's a two week injury. But they're like, you know what? You're going to go on IR. and You're going to set out another whole year. That could possibly happen to a Bryce Love this year. You know, or, you know, you look around the roster and there's a bunch of guys that we like that we think, okay, let's see what this guy has. They may be like, let's get this guy the hell out of here. And so you look at this roster and I'm telling you right now, nobody's safe. You know, at least none of the fringe guys or none of the guys that aren't first, second, third round picks, you know, that uh, that have been invested in. If you're a fifth or a sixth round pick, if you're a fourth round pick that's been here for a couple of years, your your roster spot's in danger, okay? And, and this is what you get. This is not unique to Ron Rivera, Kyle Smith, and the rest of the, the newer guys that have come in. This isn't unique, all right? This is what happens when a new regime comes in. The old guys, they have no ties to them. And, and so you're going to see a lot of guys that you thought, let's see what he has. They're going to be the hell out of here. So what this free agency period, and remember, I've said this a couple of times where I've like, look, I really still don't know what Rivera feels like about this roster. I don't know what his, um, what his feel for this roster is quite yet. Well, I think I'm starting to get a feel for how he feels about this roster. I think I'm starting to get a good uh, feel for the way he views this roster because If you thought this roster was solid and you just needed to add a couple pieces here and there and then you needed to, you know, hit it in the draft, uh, then you don't go out and sign 10 guys, you know, eight guys from the outside in and two guys that you re-sign onto the roster. You don't go out and make as many moves as the Redskins have been extremely active. Again, not a bunch of household names, not a lot of guys that get you excited, not a lot of guys that move the needle, but it's a lot of guys nonetheless, which tells me, that they see a roster that isn't locked in, that has a, a chance to have some turnover and some guys that may not be core Redskins moving forward. So uh, they're going to bring in a bunch of guys and allow them to compete and may the best man win. And the players that survive, they're going to move forward. And they have essentially a two-year window to prove to Ron Rivera that they belong here and that they're here for the long haul or else he's going to leave them off at the bus stop, pick up a couple of new people at the bus stop, and he's going to keep it moving, and then Redskins are going to be ready to win in a couple of years. So, again, I don't anticipate the Redskins being in win-now mode right out of the gate. They're going to try to win games, obviously, but I look at this as one big competition amongst all of the guys that are going to be on this roster, and you're going to get 90 guys to start, You're going to get that roster trimmed down. I guess with the new CBA, that's going to be trimmed down to what, 58 now? I think it is. Whatever it is, 55, 58. They're going to trim that roster down to 55, I think it is. And uh, they're going to add an additional 10 to 12 guys on the practice squad. And they're going to run from there. And it wouldn't shock me that, you know, this is a roster that the last few years, we've pretty much known, okay, of the 53 guys, 48 of the spots were pretty much locked up. We knew who were going to make the roster, what guys were going to be here. And then, you know, there were four or five spots back into the roster that a guy like Steven Sims Jr. was able to snag last year. You know, there's four or five of those spots at the back end of the roster that you don't know that are up for grabs come that last preseason game or so. This year, I I don't know if we can uh, can really say with 100% certainty that we know 40 of the guys that are going to make the football team. I think this is one of those years where, you know, 35 roster spots are locked in and the final 20, who the hell knows? Really, seriously, you know, there's going to be some major turnover potentially at the linebacker position. 
You can't think they're done at corner because the cornerback position to me is pretty bare at this point. So they've got some um, moves to make there. Uh, you look at the running back position. I, we really don't know what's going to happen there. I, I, again, I assume that barring any kind of catastrophic health issues, we think we know what's going to happen at running back, but you're not quite sure. I don't think they're done at wide receiver, whether they add a youngin or they decide to add a veteran down the road. Uh, but I don't think they're done there. A guy like Cam Sims. Look, this new regime has no ties to Cam Sims. There's no infatuation like uh, the Redskins fans have with him. They don't have that with him, okay? Um, uh, Troy Atke doesn't have to be here. He doesn't. Like, they don't have any ties to these guys that have been hanging around for the last couple of years. You could see some massive turnover here shortly. Even a Jimmy Moreland, you know, and I don't think he's going anywhere, but even a Jimmy Moreland's not safe. Uh, seriously, if they were to, to draft three corners or, or draft two corners and bring in an undrafted guy and he outperforms Jimmy Moreland, Jimmy could be gone. There are no ties. That's what I want you guys to understand. With all of these signings that we've seen, nobody's safe, all right? Nobody is etched in stone in terms of their roster spot except for the core guys, the first rounders, the second rounders, and some of the other guys. Kendall Fuller obviously is going to be here. But for the most part, you look around this roster, and after you get to about 35 or so guys, the back end of this roster is totally up for grabs. And that's why all of these signings are significant because it, it means there's going to be some real uh, opportunity for turnover on this roster. So the um, Redskins add two more guys. Again, they're not needle movers. I'm not excited about Richard Rodgers, okay? His dad is on the staff. Good for him. They get to work together. That's cool. But I'm not excited about Richard Rodgers, all right? I'm, I'm not that excited about Peyton Barber. I'm more excited about J.D. McKissick than I am Peyton Barber. If you ask me who's the better running back, I'll tell you it's Peyton Barber. If you ask me who offers more versatility, it's J.D. McKissick. So I don't really know what they're aiming there. Again, they're throwing darts at the dartboard. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. Like there was a, 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 a viewer on Twitter hitting me up saying, hey, you think that Peyton Barber was brought here to, to fill the Cameron artist pain role. Like they're not, I don't think they're looking for specific roles necessarily. Like, okay, I need a guy to fit my Cameron artist pain role from when I was in Carolina. I need a guy to fit my Jericho Cotchery role. Like they're not looking for that specific roles to, to put, put guys in. They're just looking for football players, guys that fit here. And so I think they're just throwing darts at the dartboard. And the more darts you throw at the dartboard, the, the more likely you're going to have enough guys stick and enough darts stick and you'll have enough to field a team and, and, and move forward like that. So, um, again, these signings don't move the needle for me whatsoever. They don't. But it just further, home, further hammers home the point that Ron Rivera is, is creating an environment where competition is going to be king. And nobody's safe just just know that and and i'm not saying that these new guys that they brought in are world beaters and that you know the guys that are already on the roster can't beat these guys out because they can't but there's going to be competition that is for damn sure and they didn't just sign these guys with the intent to just cut them loose they signed these guys to take the spots of guys that are currently on the roster so look for some turnover in 2020 and possibly more in 2021. And then after that, I think they're going to have the squad that they're going to roll with for the next three to four years. And they're going to just build off of that. So I am a Redskins fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. Redskins spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington Redskins. Tell me what you think about these two signings. You probably don't feel any type of way about these signings because again, they're ho-hum signings. Ah, oh, 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 oh. Uh, you yawn at these, right? But it, it's going to further the, the level of competition once camp finally arrives, if it arrives. Uh, so tell me what you think down in the comment section. Uh, we'll chop it up on Wednesday night, 8.30 p. Redskins report live. Uh, everything under the sun. A lot has transpired since the last time we've talked live. So looking forward to chopping it up with you guys tomorrow night. Uh, in the meantime, unless anything else breaks, um, you guys enjoy the rest of your night. You guys stay safe and we'll reconvene tomorrow. Take care. Have a good one. Three,